What's up YouTube? This is Aram and today I'm going to be showing you how to take apart a Titan X Pascal and install an EK nickel water block. Alright here we are. Make sure you have your stand aesthetic wristband and here we go. Make sure you have your screwdriver. Alright first things first. Well it would certainly look just fine. I'm going to go ahead and take off the retention bracket because I'm going to do a little bit of painting. So you need to take out the three little screws at the bottom and the two big screws up top and also the two retention screws around the DVI. All right, here we have the back plate. Now there are 12 very, very small Phillips head screws holding both pieces of the black plate on. Also, there are two slightly larger screws at the back of the back plate, also holding on the retention bracket. So you'll need to remove those to get that off as well. Then you have your four screws holding on your copper vapor chamber. This thing is very flimsy. Check that out. I think I did a pretty decent job there. That's black engine enamel paint, by the way. Heat resistant to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. There we can see the end of the cooler. All right. I'm gonna reinstall this so I have something to hold on to. Notice I only have the three smaller screws near the ports and not the two big ones because those actually go into the shroud itself and we're going to be taking that off. Alright, scary part. Now we have four screws holding on the vapor chamber. And then we have a bunch of these little hex nut screws holding on the shroud. And if you notice, there's Loctite down in there from that blue. You will need a hex wrench to do this. Do not use pliers. I'm telling you, don't do it. All right, you need one of these. This, I believe it's a 530 seconds in standard. That's what you need. That's what will get these off without damaging anything. No pliers.
Now gently, gently pull it apart, but mind the wires. There are two plugs, one for the LED logo and one for the fan, pretty well dug into the PCB. Um, if you have thin fingers, you can probably just get in there on your own. If not, then use some kind of plastic or non-conductive tweezers and try to gently wiggle things out. All right, we finally got it off. And there we have the shroud with all of the greenish standard pads and our two little connectors successfully taken out. That took quite a bit of effort. Thermal paste isn't too bad. All right, we've got all these extra little pads stuck on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just gently pry those off and put them back with the shroud for emergency purposes. In case this thing ever needs to go back, I want to have all the little bits saved. Get your toilet paper, your Q-tips, and your isopropyl alcohol, and just clean off that GPU dye. all clean nice and shiny all right time for thermal pads just follow the instructions you have a bunch of little ones for your VRAMs and you have a bunch of big ones for your VRMs MOSFETs and chokes so we're going to start with the little ones make sure to get the backing off of both sides before you stick it on there which I am not doing here, apparently. And just gently apply them to each little module. And there we go, all 12 of those are done. They did a pretty decent job here. And there are a few left over, so I could cut those and put those over a couple little components that aren't included. Nah, there's a little bit of thermal goo or whatever it is on some of these extra little power things. Those little white ones that they include in there make a mess. All right. That's cut, and now it's time to stick it. All right, this pad is going to go over your seven plus two power phases for your core and your memory. And just gently smooth that down after aligning it. You don't want to get too much of your finger grease on here. All right, here's the big fat one to go over everything else. You will have to measure and cut this one like you did for the thinner one. Just to make a little mark with your nail. Grab some scissors, just eyeball it and cut that off. If you cut it too long, that's fine. You can just trim off a little bit extra. Just don't cut it too short. All right, remove the backing from both sides. This stuff feels wet. And gently kind of tack it down. Don't get it greasy. There we go. All right.
right, like I said, I cut a few little extra ones for these tiny little things that were also covered by a few thermal pads with the stock shroud. You know, just because I had the extra pads to do so, I figured why not. Alright, get your kit out with all of your thermal grease and all the extra screws. And here is my water block. I got this one pre-filled to work with my XLC360 Predator. Nickel plated, it's got the extra little hoses on it. And this will let me just unhook it and just snap it right in without having to drain or refill anything. All right, just like your CPU, get out your thermal grease and make, as they recommend, a cross pattern in the middle of the die. Feel free to be a little generous here. You don't have to worry about putting a little bit too much. All right, now that I've just lowered that on there, we need to attach all the included screws. These ones are the six millimeter long ones. Make sure you don't get the wrong length. There are several different lengths in that packet. Also make sure you have the included washers under each one. Here's the screw for the retention bracket. It's got a little round top on it. It's a little bit shorter. And here is one of the longer screws, which is reserved for the back plate. Make sure not to mix those up. Make sure to look at the instructions. You have to put these screws in specific holes. You won't be using all of the holes that were used with the stock cooler. There's just a lot less stuff to connect. Alright, we've got all those screws in and the water block is nice and secured. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty decent job. I really do like EK's stuff. Alright, now that that's all done, it's time to install the aluminum backplate. Alright, here is the black acetyl aluminum backplate that I purchased. It's got a really nice kind of slightly ridged texture and it's got a very raw look on the underside from the uh, CNC mill. Get the little sticker off the EK logo. Very, very handsome backplate. Very solid, at least three millimeters thick too, not that flimsy little piece of junk that was on the original cooler. Right. This has its own thermal pads. This will actually be doing something, not just collecting heat on the back of the card. All right, apply the three little pads to the little areas around the GPU core, and then cut to length the little pad that you're gonna be putting on the back of the VRMs, because aside from the core, these really do run the hottest. So this will really help with cooling those off. Once you've got it all lined up, just use the appropriate 5x7 screws, not the 5x6, and just 
go in whatever motion you want to. Be sure to save the final tightening for when you have all the screws in place. Last one and done. And there we go. Titanix Pascal EKA water block install with backplate. All right, stay tuned for benchmarks. Peace.